know what trouble was. Shelter on my head. He's a mighty and good God. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah.
showing up dirt. No. No. They go, go to church, going to church don't make you nothing. Have you been washed? That's what I want to know. Have you been washed? Some folks can put on suits and dresses and hats and stockings and makeup and all this stuff and not even put water on. Washing my feet. Uh -huh. 
Now Jesus in this passage of scripture, he was not instituting in the church or in religious uh, 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 gatherings foot washing. And I'm not speaking against foot washing, but some do it. But that was not what Jesus was instituting in this instance. He was showing his disciples that you've got to become a servant. Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah. In, in the household of faith, everybody want to be the boss. Yeah. Everybody want to be in control. Yeah. Everybody want to call all the shots. Yeah. You organize a, a group of folk and somebody wants to know who's the head. Yeah. And those that ain't elected the head want to be the head. Yeah. But Jesus being God in the flesh had to demonstrate to his followers that no matter what position you hold, you must first become a servant. Yeah. Sister Springs used this term a lot. You don't have to call me Sister Springs. You don't have to call me Evangelist uh, Sister Springs. You don't have to call me this. You don't have to call me over. Just call me servant. Yeah. Jesus was taking the role and the position of a slave. Being Lord of all, he had to show them that, guess what? If you're going to follow me, you got to be a servant. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it sad in the household of faith? Most folk in church don't want to do nothing about it. You, you can't get folk in church to do nothing for and never ain't going to volunteer. But all of us in here, regardless of what your title or your position is, you are called to be a servant. And Peter said, Lord, no. In other words, Peter was like, hey, you Lord. And, 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 and you're a teacher. In other words, you don't need to do that. I dealt with it early in my pastoralship here. I'm a workaholic, so I do everything when it needs to be done. And folks used to say to me, Pastor, you don't need to be doing that. That ain't what Scripture says. Scripture calls me a servant. I hold a position, but I am a servant. And so Jesus began to, to, to listen to Peter complain about uh, you don't need to wash my feet. And then Jesus told him, said, if I don't wash go to hell. You have no part with me. So what are you saying? In other words, you cannot become a part of this that I am starting, which is the church, if you don't let me wash you. A lot of folk have joined the church, have got their name on the roll, but they have, they have neglected to let Jesus wash. They have neglected to let Jesus wash them. Now let me, let me clarify what Jesus washing you means. Jesus said, you are already clean. But not all of you. Judas was the only one in his group that allowed the enemy to influence him against the master. Some of us in church hear God talking but don't understand what he's doing or saying, but we let the enemy influence us. And we find ourselves doing what is not pleasing unto the Lord. Judas allowed the enemy to get in his mind and turn him against the Lord and Savior. That's why he said, not all of you are clean. Now you got to understand the culture of that day when foot washing was prevalent in that day because back then they didn't have a full shoe like we have. They wore sandals. And the roads that they traveled were very seldom paved. They were dusty roads. And it was customary when you went in from traveling or walking from one place to the other, your feet were nasty. And who wants to sit at me with folk with nasty feet? So it became customary to wash their feet. Can you say that? So, so Peter began to say, Lord, not so. You, you shall never wash me. And Jesus said, if I don't, you ain't got no part. 
And when Jesus said that, he said, wash me all over. Wash my hands. Wash my head. Give me, in other words, give me a bath. But how many know everybody in church don't need a bath? Some just need wash. Because those that have that done have a bath do what the Lord say do. They come when the Lord say come. They react the way the Lord say react. But those that need a, that need a bath need to be cleansed and otherwise. The question is, are you going to church, but have you been washed? I don't want my name on the church road. And it missing in glory. Amen. Amen. So go, guess what? Your name is, is recorded in two places. <laughs> Down here when you join church. And up there. The bottom line is up there. We only got one book for y'all. Amen. If your name ain't on this book, you can go where you want to go. But up there in glory, they got two books. Amen. And, 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 and if your name ain't right written down in the Lamb Book of Life, you in serious trouble. Amen. And the only way to get your name in the Lamb Book of Life, you got to be washed. Amen. Amen. Some, somebody ain't getting this. You, you, you got to be washed. You, you can't be a church goer. What Jesus was saying, some of you are already clean. In other words, I don't like to, I don't like to clean you up. You, you already that. But some of you need for him to wash you. Can you say amen? This ain't no beat you up message. This is informal. Informal, man. It informs you. Can you say amen? That going to church ain't no good. I've been going, I'm 67 now. I've been going to church ever since I was 30 on a regular basis. But if I had been doing it all these years and not let Jesus wash me, I'd have wasted my time. And guess what? Tomorrow ain't promised. Sister Spring done spoke it and it done start happening. Talk is falling dead. I heard just yesterday, some child overdosed. It's home, folks. It, it's close to us. Closer than you think. And God wants to know, is, have you been washed? Because tomorrow might be your day. We say it all the time. Time for plan is over. But tomorrow, it might be your day. Jesus said, their son is clean. And guess what? He chose them. He chose the ones that got clean, and he also chose the one that stayed dirty. That's why he said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And one of you have a devil. Jesus knew everything. Can you say amen? amen? We have to say, you can still fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people oh. all the time. And you can't fool God none of the time. All right. The person sitting next to you might think you got it together. All right. yeah. the, man, the person that, that, that noticed you shout on the regular basis might think or, or conclude that you own your way to glory, but only God knows. Have you been warned? Cause like I said, wash folk in God don't do what you see folk in church doing that. Who glory to God. The Bible said he slowly got up. Took off his outer coat. Gurring himself with a towel. Wrapped it around and let them know I, I, I created you. Not for you to serve me 24-7, uh, but I'm going to prove to you I, I, my job is to serve you. This is my purpose. I've come to serve you. i come to benefit you. People that are, will not make themselves a servant think only of themselves. A selfish 
Jesus said, the first shall be last, and the last shall be. In other words, if you want to have a high position, take the low. You want to be something in church, take the low, be the doorkeeper. See, God is a God of promotion. God knows he, he don't start us on the top of a ladder. He promotes us. Somebody better get this. You can't be head deacon if you're the young deacon. But, but and, and we've done the believers done away with that. When Donald passed, we've done away with that position. We ain't having no head deacon. Ain't nobody the boss here. Not the pastor, not the mother of the church. Don't know. 
oh glory to God. Somebody help me. All we do is transition from those of us that wash. Now those of us that ain't wash, we're going to be part down at Oak Grove in a four or three by six. But those of us that have been one going to be translated. Our body going to be part, but our spirit, glory. My spirit going to be translated because I've been one. Am I talking to me? sitting in church talking and them lips ain't moving. <laughs> they run in their mouth with their minds. And they let their heart speak. They ain't looking at you. Their heads down on the floor. Can you say amen? Because they ain't been washed. But a person that's washed is paying attention. Yes. Whoo, glory. Amen. If you're paying attention, guess what? You are observing everything that you hear. Yes. <sighs> Too many times we leave church on a catchy phrase. Mm -hmm. That's all we got out of that message was that catchy phrase. But Jesus told me, hey, unless I wash you, if I don't wash you, you're not part of what I'm starting. You're not part of this ministry. Amen. And what he's saying is, if you ain't been washed, I'm about done. If you ain't been washed, you can't be used by me. Who can I throw that out there? God is saying, if I ain't been washed, you can't use me. That's why it's like, that's all he said in a nutshell to Peter, if I don't wash you, I can't use you. We'll sing that song. Use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me closer. But we ain't been washed. God can't use us unless we've been washed. Hot in the blood. Things I used to do, I cannot do it. Yeah. Don't have a desire to. Yeah. The things I that control me. Yeah. Back before I got washed. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. Yeah. That's what you, Jesus wasn't saying. Now, now get, get this. He was not saying that those that he said were already clean won't make a mistake. Yeah. Won't ever sin. He said, but what he's saying is their minds is made up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. We missed the mark. But all of us, most of us, our minds are made up. Yes. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. He said, if, in other words, if, if, you, if you've been bathed, if you had a bath, you don't need me to wash. Mm -hmm. Ooh, glory to God. But what he's saying is, when you're traveling, this old sinful life, glory. Yes, yes. You're going to get dirty every now and then. Oh, glory. Can I talk up in here? Every now and then, Brother Tommy, the, the filth of the world is going to try to attach itself. Yes, yes. And you got to know where the bathhouse is. Ah, yes. Ooh, glory. Every now and then, I'm going to get a little dirt on my feet and on my trousers. I got to know where I can get clean. Sister Judy, when I first started serving the Lord, I'd been in God for a little while, not, not a long time, and I run into an incident that caused me to revert back to what I used to be, a brawler and a curse, and I got into this fuss fight with somebody, and I began to revert back to what I was good at before I got washed. And I started cussing them out. I started getting, using them helping words, you know. And when I got done, you know, I felt good about myself because my cursing kept them at bay. <laughs> my, my cursing made them regroup or rethink their attack on me. I started cursing them out. Now, back then, I pride my, you ain't going to have to curse me. I'm like Paul. Paul said, I was chief among them. You ain't going to have to curse me. You try one helping 
white couple over at Oak Ridge. Uh -huh. We went over there and I talked to her and I shared that experience with her and told her how I felt. My head was low. Because yeah. God was using me. Yeah. I done been walked. Yeah. I done quit my night clubbing, my womanizing, my reefer smoking. I was in God, but I let him get the best of yeah. me. Crushed me as a young Christian. But God said, 